best bites forever. Hey, what's up? In this video, you will learn how to make beef wellington. If you're new here, welcome, and don't forget to click on that subscribe button so that you can get more delicious recipes. And if you're already one of my BBFs, what is up? I'm glad you stopped by. Now let's rock this out. I'm going to start off here by making my mushroom duck cell, and for that I am using a portobello mushroom, although there are two in the package, I'm only using one, and I'm using about four ounces of the baby bellas. For my portobello mushroom, I'm going to go ahead and remove the gills of the mushroom. Of course, they won't hurt you, you can totally eat them, but I like to remove them simply because they can discolor the things around them. They have a lot of color in them. Also, do you see that tiny little shallot back there on the cutting board? I will be cutting him up and adding him in, in a few minutes. Next I'm going to remove the little dry ends here off of my mushrooms and then I'm just going to slice right across them. Go ahead and do like I said like four ounces of the smaller mushrooms. You can definitely do more if you want your wellington to be mushroomy or mushroomy or yes. Okay so for the portabella I'm going to cut it sideways and then I'm going to turn it this way. Cut across it until I have a diced mushroom kind of thing going on and then I'm going to take all of my mushrooms, put them into one happy pile, and run my knife through them a couple of times. Keep in mind I do have a few of the small ones still left to chop, so this is not all of my mushrooms. Over here on the stove I have three tablespoons of butter melting down, and there's that little shallot that I pointed out to you a few minutes ago. I went ahead and diced that and added it into my butter, along with a pinch of salt. I'm going to go ahead and saute my shallot around in the butter until it becomes kind of translucent and looks something like this. Now if you want to add wine in, and this is an optional thing, this would be the time to do it and you can add about a quarter of a cup and then just reduce it for a second. I chose not to add wine in this time probably because I was drinking it and didn't want to put it into my food because I didn't have enough at this particular moment. Anyway, moving right along, I added in those mushrooms, another little little pinch of salt, maybe a quarter teaspoon or so, along with some freshly ground black pepper. And then I just want to go ahead and stir this around. And what I'm trying to do here is get those mushrooms really well coated in the butter and get the salt and pepper spread around nicely. I'm going to cook these mushrooms down until they look something like this and they are no longer letting off lots of liquid. We don't want lots of liquid in here because we don't want soggy puff pastry. Put that to the side to cool and now it is time to take care of our piece of meat. For this I am using this completely beautiful piece of beef tenderloin and I obviously just took it out of the package. I'm going to dry it off a little bit and then I'm going to start fabbing it out. So one of the most important things here if you are fabbing out your own meat is to get rid of this silver skin. That's this skin that I'm cutting under right now. It's very tough. It will not cook down and it will not be good. So get rid of all that. I've also removed the chain piece of meat and I'm just kind of trimming around it. It's kind of awesome because this this meat has its own natural separation so it's kind of easy to tell where you need to cut it. What I'm trying to do here is get this beautiful kind of center piece like the center cut of the filet. You can also ask your butcher to do this. You don't have to like buy this big giant piece of beef and try to do this yourself at home. If you're not comfortable doing it just let the butcher know what you are making and see if they will do it for you and save yourself a little bit of trouble. I'm going to go ahead and continue cutting down my piece of meat until it's beautiful and even and I'm happy with it. All this other meat is going into the fridge and will be used for beef stroganoff and stuff like that. Once I get my meat all beautiful and perfect in the way that I want it, I covered it with some kosher salt and then some freshly ground black pepper. Do make sure that you're using kosher salt, kosher salt, kosher salt, not iodized salt here. Kosher salt is much better for raw meat. I'm going to go ahead, put this into my pan on a medium high heat and give it a nice sear. So when it's letting go of the pan, it's letting you know that it's ready to be turned. If it's sticking, it is not ready to turn, so just give it a few more seconds on there. You can also do this on high if you want, but on my stove that makes the oil smoke, which by the way is olive oil. This is my beautiful duck liver pate. Here I have those mushrooms that we just cooked on the stove and they are nice and cool. And here I have some truffles. Now I don't have access to fresh black truffles. I don't 
don't know if you guys are cool like that and you do, but I don't anymore. So I bought these online and they are just in olive oil. I'm not going to give you the brand only because I didn't hate them, but I also didn't love them. And I only want to recommend stuff to you guys that I really, really love. So if I happen to find a brand that I love, 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 I will put a link down below. But until that happens, there will be no link. So anyway, I am chopping these little mushrooms quite a bit because I want them spread throughout my mushrooms. So here again, my cooled mushrooms, I am adding my pate right in there and taking off a couple little samples for the people in the room. I'm also putting my truffles into the same bowl and then I'm going to give it a nice little mix. So the easiest and best way that I have found to do this is basically to mash the pate down into the mushrooms and then stir it. Once I get that nice and done, I am moving on to my puff pastry. You can see here that I have two sheets stuck together. You don't have to do that, but I decided that I wanted extra puffy. Plus, you need it to be about a quarter inch thick when you're all done rolling it. So I stuck them together with a little bit of egg wash and rolled them out. This is my piece of meat that I have in there. Yes, it's wrapped in foil, but that will not be how it is when it bakes. I'm just kind of trying to get like a measure on it and see how far I need to roll my pastry out. This meat was in the refrigerator. You want to have this super, super cool like refrigerator temperature because if you put warm beef into the oven, it will definitely overcook. Make sure you are keeping your beef cool. This is that completely delicious mushroom mixture with the pate mixed into it that we made just a couple of minutes ago, and it is quite sticky and hard to spread. So the best way that I have found to spread this is just to use my fingers and just kind of mush and mash on it until it is nice and evenly spread like so. You do want to leave like a border around it because it's going to ooze out, first of all, if you don't, and secondly, you can't really seal your puff pastry if you don't have that little border. So here is my little piece of beef. He's going directly on on top of there then you just want to fold this over and take a second to wipe your hands because you have all of that like mushroom pate goodness going on in there which is delicious but it's not pretty when it's on the other side of your puff pastry so we want everything to say you know nice and pretty so here is my egg wash this is just one egg mixed with a tablespoon of milk you can also use water if you want to and I'm just going to give it a little brush underneath the seam of my puff pastry here and fold it over. Make sure that you do go down the edges because in a second we're going to want to seal those edges up and you're definitely going to need a little bit of egg wash to make that happen. So once you get the bottom of it completely covered, go ahead and put it into the pan you're going to cook it in. Make sure you have some cooking spray or oil in there and then you're going to fold the ends over kind of like you're doing little hospital corners on a sheet like the corner of your bed or whatever and then get him nice and shapen and how you want him to look because how you make him look now is how he's going to look when he comes out of the oven. Go ahead and do an egg wash on the outside as well as the sides, the top, and all around. By the way, you should have your oven heated up to 425 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. And here I am just taking the tip of my knife and making some little X's. This is to vent the steam out of the inside of this so that our puff pastry doesn't get soggy. Also, put this on the bottom rack of your oven. It's going to take anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes depending on the temperature your oven is actually at because they don't normally run at exactly what they say they're at. I cooked mine to 125 degrees. I personally would not take it up over 130, but I'm going to leave that temperature up to you. Let it rest for 10 minutes before you even think about cutting into it. And then, oh yes, the angels are singing as you open up that beautiful beef wellington. Are you freaking kidding me? That looks beautiful, and trust me, it was absolutely delicious. Hey, guys, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so now. Make sure that you give this a like, a thumbs up, and all that cool stuff. Also, make sure to share it with all of your friends because sharing is caring, and I will see you in the next video. Happy cooking, everyone. BestBikesForever.com